Lots of people have been slamming a very specific scene for its absurdity and its flagrant disregard for science, Leia surviving rapid decompression and returning home safely. While I'll admit that the imagery is a little silly, there's really nothing going on here that should feel weird in a Star Wars movie. First, remember that Star Wars does have the Force, so there's absolutely no problem with essentially using Force pull to pull yourself back to a ship in space. So no, Leia isn't flying here. This is propelling yourself in microgravity with a force pull, and that's really a big difference. Now, some might have issue with Leia's very first active use of the force being a force pull, but it actually seems to be a starting point for several force users. Luke Skywalker received literal seconds of Jedi training from Obi-Wan Kenobi, but was capable of a force pull despite never even seeing this power in action. And at the end of The Last Jedi, we see a mod force pull from the orphan boy on Canto Bite. After all, if any of us were force sensitive, I think the very first time we'd find out is by trying to pull something toward us. Admit it, you've tried. So on to the more scientific side of things. I think a lot of people have the misconception that rapid decompression is an instant death scenario. You fly out into space and you explode, or you fry like an egg, or you freeze instantly, and none of these things is true. Heat actually needs a medium to pass through to leave your body, but in space there's nothing there, so your body actually retains most of its heat. You'd also swell up quite a bit. Your extremities might actually reach almost double their size, but you wouldn't expect explode because there's not enough pressure in your body to overcome the tension of your skin. And we know all this because tests have actually been done on living animals in rapid decompression environments. In the 1960s, NASA and the United States Department of Defense tested the effects of decompression on dogs and chimpanzees respectively. NASA found that all of its test subjects passed out within 10 seconds of exposure, and 100% of their subjects had full recoveries when they were repressurized after two minutes of exposure. The Department of Defense experiments, which focused on the behavior and recovery of their test subjects after exposure, found that within this two-minute window, there was no permanent brain damage or noticeable behavior changes, and most subjects were completely normal after just a few hours. That's after approximately two minutes of exposure. However, between two and a half minutes and three minutes of exposure, there was a rapid drop-off on survival. In the NASA test, only 20% of their subjects survived after three minutes of exposure. So how long was was Leia in space. One minute, 49 seconds. Timed from the moment the hull is breached to the moment the door is opened inside. That's well within survivability. In fact, if the NASA test is to be authoritative, she actually had a virtually 100% chance of surviving the ordeal. Of course, this is all given that force powers are a real thing to get her back to the ship but that's internally consistent with the Star Wars universe. So that leaves only one strange anomaly here, that Leia regains consciousness while still in space. If you were blown into space, you'd pass out within seconds and you would stay unconscious until you were repressurized. Now, we could say that the Force somehow reoxygenated Leia's blood just long enough for her to make it back to the ship, but we've also never seen the Force applied in that way. Or have we? The force keeping their blood oxygenated could definitely be one possible explanation for how Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon managed to survive a seemingly impossible amount of time in a room flooded with dioxys. I'm assuming they left them in there longer than would be natural to hold your breath. Either way, we are introduced to new force powers all the time, almost won a movie for a while. So that's not really an obstacle, but it is kind of too convenient of an answer to be satisfying. I think a key thing to note here is that Leia is not fine when she returns to the ship. She's still unconscious, and she stays unconscious for a long time afterward. So it's not like she woke up in space, pulled herself back to the ship, and resumed normal activity without missing a step. This makes me think that Leia never actually regained consciousness at all. Not in a literal sense. Yes, her hand moves and her eyes open, but I have a stronger feeling that this is a representation of Leia's unconscious mind willing herself to survive than her literally waking up. But that's ultimately just speculation. Leia still required immediate medical treatment, the same as anybody would in that scenario. And yes, virtually anybody could survive if they were rescued within two minutes, regardless of whether or not that rescue was facilitated by supernatural means. Her survival itself is not supernatural. If somebody else pulled her back to the ship or went out in a smaller ship to pick her up in the same amount of time, there'd be virtually no problem here whatsoever, even if this were a hard sci-fi film. 
but this is space opera and supernatural elements like the force are commonplace in this world. And a power as simple as this doesn't require much training at all. So the scene really comes down to how it was shot and how you explain her appearing to regain consciousness. After all, it is a little visually jarring. Personally, after learning about the real effects of depressurization a few years ago, I actually liked how Star Wars depicted it fairly realistically. And it was definitely cool to see Leia finally proving that the Force indeed runs strong in her family. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you next time.